Hello and welcome to the Fast API Crash Course for Beginners. I wanted to do this one for a long time, but I didn't have the chance to do it earlier. But it's better later than never. I decided to follow a different approach in this course, which is the practical approach. Meaning that, instead of me showing you a few slides, talk a little bit, and then show you some features by typing some code, I decided instead to build a CRUD router application. And I'm sure you will learn a lot because we will create different routes using different HTTP request methods to create, read, update, and delete to-dos. So we will type some code together step by step and we'll see what the code builds actually. But still, I will show you a few slides, then we'll jump directly to VS Code or any text editor of your choice. And by the way, I have a video on fast API, but it's an eight minutes video, just scratching the surface. I will leave the link to that video in the description section below. All right, so what is Fast API? Fast API is a modern and fast web framework for building APIs. And it works from Python 3.6 and above, and it's based on standard Python type hints. Also, Fast API supports concurrency and coroutines, but I'm not going to talk about concurrency and parallelism in Fast API in this video. If you'd like to see what is concurrency, and how it's working in Fast API, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, Fast API is one of the fastest Python frameworks available, and with speed comes very high performance. Fast API is on par with Node.js and Go, which means that Fast API is on the same level as Node.js and Go language. So, Fast API by experience is faster than Express.js and Nest.js. Express and Nest are just back-end frameworks for Node.js, and Node.js is just a runtime for JavaScript to work on the backend. So Node.js is just JavaScript code that we write on the backend or on the server side, okay? And it's based on V8 engine, the same engine on which runs Google Chrome. So let me show you very quickly. Um, this is the documentation for Go language. Okay, so Go is an open source programming language. It's a backend language, of course, and it's easy to build simple, reliable, and efficient software. So this is Go. Express is just a web framework for Node.js. So to compare Fast API, it should be compared with another framework, in this case, Express. And I told you by experience, Fast API is faster than Express. I really don't know about Nest. I heard some colleagues of mine saying that Fast API is faster than Nest.js as well. But if this is the case, it wouldn't be a surprise for me. Fast API also is designed to be easy to use and learn, which means less time reading documentation and more time to produce. And also it minimizes the code duplication, which results in fewer bugs. It's also a robust framework with automatic interactive documentation, and we'll talk about the interactive documentation in the next slide. So let's check out some of the features of Fast API. First, it has Open API, which makes the creation of APIs very easy, including declarations of path operations, parameters, body requests, etc. Also, it has automatic data model documentation with JSON schema, as Open API itself is based on JSON schema. Also, Fast API can help you test your requests and uh, see the responses using the interactive API documentation. And I will show you that in the browser when we will create our CRUD router application. And the last feature on the list is no new syntax to learn, just standard modern Python. So if you feel comfortable writing Python code, then you will feel very comfortable writing your web applications in Fast API. So let me talk a little bit about concurrency, ASCII, UVCorn, what's all that? Fast API uses ASCII, which stands for Synchronous Server Gateway Interface. If you have seen my videos in Flask and Django, we said that Django, starting from Django 3.0, uses the ASCII server. So ASCII is a server. Or to be more specific, ASCII or WSGI, there are just the interface between the server and your web application. So it's kind of the connection between both actually. So Django 3.0 uses ASCII server, Flask uses WSGI server, and Fast API uses ASCII server. 
and we need to install that server or that implementation for the server. And this is where UVCorn comes to play. So we install UVCorn via pip install UVCorn. And what it is, is just the server implementation. And it's not only limited to UVCorn. There are others like um, Daphne or Hypercorn. Uh, but the most popular and the most compatible with fast API is UVCorn. By far, it's the most famous one. And ASCII helps an ecosystem of Python web frameworks that are highly competitive against Node and Go. So you will need to understand that FastAPI as a web framework uses ASCII server, which is in our case, UVCorn. And UVCorn, which is our server, uses something called Starlet. And Starlet is just a lightweight ASCII framework or toolkit. If you remember in Flask Crash Course, we said that in Flask, we have a WSGI server. And this WSGI server uses a toolkit called WorkZwig. So Starlet is very similar to WorkZwig. It's just a tool that helps the server building high performance services. And in our fast API case, it's a sync IO services. Okay, so hope all that makes sense. Again, just to recap very quickly, fast api which is our framework uses the ascii server and we can choose from uvcorn daphne or hypercorn but we very often use uvcorn and uvcorn itself it needs a toolkit or a framework and this framework is starlet so starlet helps uvcorn building high performance sync io services all right so this is in a nutshell the whole story so let me talk a little bit about the Fast API creator, Sebastian Ramirez. He's the creator of Fast API and Typer. And Typer was intended to be the Fast API of CLIs or command line interfaces. And I will show you that in a second on the GitHub page. He's also a developer at the Explosion Company. He works a lot with artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, full stack distributed systems. Um, he works with SQL, NoSQL, and a whole bunch of other texts. All right. So this is Sebastian. And let me show you his um, GitHub page real quick. So you can see here is uh, his commits. He's the creator of Fast API and Typer. He's a great guy. And thank you, Sebastian, for creating Fast API. It's an awesome web framework, really. I like now to work with the farm stack, which is Fast API, React, and MongoDB, by the way. And let me show you the Fast API page. So in the video that I've created two months ago, we had 22,000 stars. So two months later, it's 26,600 stars. All right. So it's growing real fast and it has 208 contributors. So I trust that anything that you need to know in Fast API, you will find it either on the GitHub page or on the official website fastapi.tiangolo.com and the documentation is amazing by the way it's perfect this is the concurrency and a sync away code i love this page i've read it all it's beautiful if you're interested in concurrency and a sync await code i advise you to read this page okay so let's get back to fast api page so you can see here some opinions of different companies for example netflix Okay, Netflix is pleased to announce the open source release of our crisis management orchestration framework dispatch built with fast API. So it's really growing in reputation and I suspect that fast API will have great future in the world of Python web frameworks. All right, so before we get started, let's go ahead and install fast API, UVCorn and Starlet. Um, on three different lines like that, or just all at once on one line, pip install fast API, UVCorn, and Starlet together, because we're going to need them in our CRUD router application project. So yeah, let's go ahead and build our CRUD router. All right, so let's go ahead and create a folder. So I will create it on the desktop. So go to desktop make dir and we'll call the folder fast api crud crash okay 
So let's access that fast API. Crowd crash and let's open it with Visual Studio Code. All right, so let me actually show you the structure of the project. So this is the main structure of our project. So inside your main folder, so I'm going to create a folder now called Fast API. Inside that folder, I will have main.py file and a folder called app. Inside app, I will have two files, init.py and api.py, or actually let's call it app.py. All right, so make sure you have that structure in order to start uh, working with me. Okay, so we don't need that anymore. The first thing that I want to do is I want to go to the main.py file. So in the main.py file, we want to define an entry point for running our app, which will be running directly in the fast API site. And we're not going to create a front end site, so no React or Vue or Angular or anything of that. Just we'll create the back end today and we'll display it through the fast API interactive documentation. So the first thing that you will need to do is you will need to import the server. And do you remember what's our server called? Exactly, UVCorn. So we'll need to import UVCorn. Then what I want to do below here, I will say if name equal to main. In this case, what I want to do, I want the server to run and here I want the app dot so I want to access app folder and then I want to access the app.py file okay so app dot app and to be run as the main app okay next what I want is the host so we will say zero 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 okay and by the way you can wipe it off totally and it will default to the local host 127.001, right? So it doesn't make a difference. Also, our port is 8000. The default port for fast API is 8000. And I want to set reload to true, which is very analogistic to debug mode in Flask. You set the debug mode in Flask to true in the development, okay? You set it to false in production when you will deploy your app, all right? So I don't know why I wrote if like that. So here what we did actually is we have told main.py to run the ask uvcorn server on port 8000 and to set reload to true, okay? And you want to make sure that reload is set to false if you will deploy your application. Never forget that. And what I like to do also is I like to determine this to 127.0.0.1 or as I told you, you can wipe it off totally. So it's up to you. Let's actually delete it just to have fewer code. All right. And now I want to create a base route in app.py. So let's go to app.py and I want to import from fast API, fast API class, and then I will create an app object and it's an instance of the main class. It inherits everything from the main class. And then I want to create a route decorator. It's very similar to Flask. And also in Django, we had the path route. So you can notice that these frameworks have the same logic, but the syntax is different. So we'll say at app.get, and we want to get just an empty route or a slash. And here we'll create tags and this will be very obvious to you when we'll open the docs or the documentation or the interactive documentation in Fast API. And this is just the category under which um, this get request will be classified. It's nothing more than that. And then let's create our function. So I will call it root. And this points to a dict or a dictionary. And it will return just, we'll say, ping 
pong like that and let's actually add a sync here a sync code if you don't want to include it don't include it but I think it's a good practice at least to get used to type the word async or the async syntax so when you create a fast API path operation you can return any data from it um, in our case we have a dict or dictionary but you can return anything a list a database model anything that you want and by default fast API would automatically convert that return value to JSON so behind the scenes it would put that JSON compatible data um, in our case the dictionary inside of a JSON response and this would be used to send the response to the client so we don't have to import any external package fast API will take care of that all right so let's go ahead and try that out actually our minimal app so let's enter the main directory fast API and Python main.py so we have here the server running on um, the local host and listening on port 8000 let's click on that we'll open your default browser and we'll get ping pong okay so if you'll go to the URL and type docs slash docs and hit enter you will have here this is open API okay this is the main interactive um, documentation provided by fast API to make your life easier so if you'll click on get you'll have here everything that you'll need to do um, interactively speaking so try it out then execute and you'll find the ping pong this is the response that we get to our um, get request okay and if you will take that curl link you copy it and if you're working on Mac OS or Linux you have curl pre-installed in your system and if you don't have that if you have Windows I mean um, I think it's a good idea to install git bash so in git bash um, you will have curl installed so let's paste that um, curl link and hit enter and you will get the response ping pong all right but even if you don't have that um, fast API really makes it easy for you to see what's going on and if you will have an error you will find here the type of error that um, that was reported okay so this is simply it uh, and I think it's pretty cool from fast API to do something like that okay let's close the browser and let's get back to our code let's um, shut the server all right so we said that our crud application will be divided into four sections create read update and delete so these are the main four functions in all the websites that you can create something on them so you can create a blog post create a to-do app like we're going to do now um, anything basically that requires that you create something and you can update it you can delete it and you can get it so let's type here a comment um, minimal app get request okay so this has a root tag we are going now to create four um, routes so we want get post put and delete and this get request pertains to um, read to do post is create to do put will be uh, to update a to do and delete is just delete to do okay simply so let's start by get so get is very easy it's very similar to the main get that we have created here so let's have a route right and when you will type slash to do you should be able to get the list of the to do's and we will put that um, in a tag and we'll call it just to do's okay then we want to create our function and I will call it um, 
get to do. All right. And also it will return a dictionary. I don't know why I did that. Okay. And it will return um, the data. And the data here could be from your database. So if you're working with a NoSQL database like Mongo, for example, or an SQL DBMS like, um, for example, MySQL or um, PostgreSQL, SQL Alchemy, any DBMS, you can use it easily here. But just for the sake of simplicity in this crash course, I'm going to create a dictionary of different to-dos. So I will call it to-dos and I will put it just down. So to-dos is a list and inside that list, let's paste two of these to-dos, okay? So these are dummy data just for this demonstration. All right, so white thread. Oh, sorry for that. We want to return this um, dictionary, which will be parsed automatically to JSON data. Okay. So the list of to do's that will be displayed is that list here. Okay. So pretty simple and pretty logical. So let's actually go ahead and try that out. So if you will, um, if you're using Visual Studio Code and if you will hover over to do's and you hit control, you find that this is the to do's that we have created below. But again, this could be substituted with your database. All right. So let's open our integrated terminal. Let's enter fast API and run our main.py file. So now if we will do like that, slash to do, we will have our data. So ID one with the activity, ID two with the activity. But if we will go now to the docs, we will have a different, you see, this is the tags that we have, uh, where is it? That we have created. You see root, and to do's okay so in the get route for um, get to do's if you will try it out execute you will get both activities or uh, both to do's okay and again if you will take that curl link and we'll try it on git bash and we'll paste it we will get our um, response with a status code 200, which means that everything is okay, no internal error on the server, and um, it responded perfectly. Okay. All right, so far so good. So we have created our first route or our first um, letter in the CRUD, which is read. Now let's go ahead and create our post route just close that okay so post route is pretty simple again we will need a route at app dot post in this case and it's directed towards the same route to do on the same tag category which is to do's and we'll create our a synchronous function and we'll call it add to do and the to do here is going to be a dictionary okay so this is the argument or the input that we want a to do in the form of dictionary and um, it's pointing to dict and then we want to append in the to do's list down here whatever to do that you will enter so we have a parameter to do to dict and in the argument that you will enter, it should be in the form of a dictionary. So the to do's list we will append to that, whatever to do that you will enter. And what we want to return is just a dictionary. And we will say here data. So this is what happens after you enter your to do. 
you get a message uh, in the form of dictionary or on the browser will be in the form of JSON telling you that a to-do has been added successfully. Something like that. A to-do has been added. So a to-do All right, so this is post. So let's go ahead and try that out. All right, let's go to docs. Okay, perfect. So we have our second route and notice it has a different color get with blue and post with green. So let's go ahead and try to post um, a to-do. So try it out. So let me actually cheat and take one from here. All right, copy that. Okay, and I'll say that this is activity number three say play football with the dudes all right oops so we'll execute and we have a response 200 um, everything went okay data a to do has been added all right and if we will get up and get the list of to-dos again, you'll find that our third activity has been added to the to-dos list. All right, so perfect. Um, let's actually close that, close that. Well, I don't know why I did that because I will close the whole browser. All right, so, so far we have created the get request or the read to-dos and create to-dos with the post request. Now, the third request that we have is put or update to-do. And this is pretty simple. What we'll need to do is we'll create, as always, a route with the put request to-do, like we have done here and here. But we will add, this time, the individual ID number that we want. Because logically, if you want to update, you will not update everything at once, but you will choose only one to do activity to update it. And to do that, we will need an ID number. And it will go under the same tag name to do's. All right, and let's create our function. We'll call it update to do. And we'll have two parameters, an ID and body. So the ID, it should be an integer, all right? And the body must be a dictionary, okay? So these are our parameters, an ID and body. And this points to a dict as always. And we want to loop over the to-dos list. So for each to-do item in the to-dos list, I want to check out if that ID is equal to the ID that you have entered, then the item or the activity must be equal to the activity in the body where you're going to update your activities. In order to do that, let's go ahead and have our for loop for to-do in to-dos. And here we're going to have a condition. So we want to check if the to-do with that ID number is equal to whatever ID is going to be entered, all right? But something is missing. We need to parse that into an integer to have the same data type. In this case, I want to say to-do with uh, not item activity should be equal to the activity in the body, All right? By the way, I wanted to ask you guys, what is the text editor that you are using right now? Please drop a comment in the section below and let me know. So if this is the case, we want to return a JSON 
data saying that to do with ID has been updated and we can do that in a better way by using the F string and we can add whatever the ID number that has been entered so or has been updated should I say and with ID number and here just we will plug the ID number all right um, otherwise I won't say that um, this ID number was not found so um, also data also let's use f string um, to do with this ID number whatever ID is was not found all right perfect so let's go ahead actually and try that out So you see how fast API is really fast in implementing and showing and making changes. This is what makes fast API stands out. So uh, let's go to to do, uh, not to do, but to docs and take a look. It's really cool. Get with a blue color, post with a green color and put with orange color. It's neat. It's clean. I like it really. So we have our get request, our post request and our put request now let's go ahead and try put so let's check out first our um, get so of course it's there is no persistent data because we don't have database so the third activity that we have created was wiped off um, so actually let me try post again so so we'll try that again three and let's type something like the same playing football with the dudes all right and let's copy it just in case and let's execute and we have response body um, successful response which is a to do has been added okay perfect now I want to modify that uh, first let's check it in um, in our to do's so execute another get and there it is all right so now let's try to modify it so the id let's enter a number it should be an integer which is number three and we'll paste that and instead of playing football with the dudes i want to say playing super mario and let's make execute and we have here data to do with ID3 has been updated. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and create our last route, our delete route. And this is very easy and very similar to our put route. So let's go ahead and create another decorator. So app.delete and the route will be to do and it goes to an individual ID and also it's classified under the to do's tag and let's create our function async def and we will call it delete to do the only input that I want is the ID number because logically you want to delete a to do with an ID number so ID must be an integer otherwise you will have an error and we'll also loop over the to do's list so for to do in to do's we want to check if um, the to do with that id is equal to is the same like in post so id and also we want to wrap that in int method in that case I want to remove that specific to do item so to do is dot remove method and we will pass inside that to do that to do with that specific ID all right and we will return also a message saying data has been 
delete it or to do with ID number and whatever the number of ID is has been deleted else if there is an error uh, we can return something like All right, this to do with this ID number uh, wasn't found. All right, and that's it. This is our CRUD router application. Of course, we can use a front end framework like React or Angular. I personally love to work with React more. As this channel provides only Python and Python frameworks, databases related to Python and so on, I've never presented any front end framework or JavaScript. I only have two uh, projects in JavaScript, not more. But if you would like me to um, recreate that application using React, please let me know in the comment section below. All right. But for the moment, let's go ahead and run the server to test our last um, HTTP method delete. So fast API. Okay, our default page, ping pong, and let's go to docs. And look at that. How clean and nice and neat is that? Get, post, put, delete with different colors under a tag name. And if we have different methods under different category, it will be under a different tag name. All right, so let's now test them all. Let's first get everything. So this is the read in the CRUD, execute. We have our two activities that we have written in our script. Now let's go ahead and create a third one. So try it out. And here, let's actually cheat a little bit and go to um, execute. And here, take that. And we'll go here in the request body and we'll paste that. Three activity. Let's change it. Let's say um, get some sleep. Okay. Sleep is very important as well. And if we'll execute it and if we'll go up to get to do's, we'll find that get some sleep has been added to my to do list. Um, now let's try to put or update. So let's update the third one. So you need to click on try, uh, try it out. And let's update the third one. And here, um, so here should be three as well. The same ID in the request body should be the same ID uh, that we have entered. And let's actually, instead of get some sleep, let's say play, um, I don't know. A Mortal Kombat. Execute. And we have to do with ID3 has been updated. And if we'll go to our uh, to do lists, if we'll execute to get the to do's, we'll find that play Mortal Kombat. Okay, ID number three has been updated. All right. Let's try the last route or the last uh, HTTP request, delete. Let's click on delete and try it out. And let's delete the third to do. Execute. And that's it. To do with ID3 has been deleted. So if we will go to the get to do's and we'll click on execute, you'll find that it has been removed from um, the to do's list. All right, so this was the Fast API Crash Course. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I love to answer all your questions. Also, if you have any suggestions, any types of videos that you would like to see in the channel, also please let me know. All right, so thank you very much guys for watching and I will see you in the next Crash Courses. Take it easy.